All right, here are the solutions. Make sure that you have actually completed the problems to the best of your ability before checking these out so that you can get the most out of them. All right, so here are the graphs. Uh, notice that I'm just taking a look at the general uh, exponential function and then making any transformations that are necessary. I've color coded them so you can check these out for yourself. The uh, one that I'm going to go over here is h of x. Notice that there are two transformations. There's a translation upwards 10 units and then a reflection uh, over the horizontal asymptote. So if I'm translating up 10 units, imagine the horizontal asymptote being the x-axis and now translates up 10 units and it's the line y equals 10. Then I reflect it over the line y equals 10 and it becomes this graph right here. Okay, so looking at the characteristics here, the first one, um, the domain is all real numbers. That's pretty self-explanatory. The range are all real numbers greater than zero. So I know that um, the y values will only be greater than zero, meaning above the x-axis. I get rid of this piece here. As x approaches infinity, it's my right end behavior. The y values are approaching zero, like that. And as x approaches negative infinity, the y values are approaching positive infinity. So I've graphed it like this. Once I've done that, it's pretty easy for me to um, define what a and b have to be. Uh, the a value has to be positive. The y-intercept has to be positive. So a has to be greater than 0. And we know this is an exponential decay function, so the base has to be between 0 and 1. All right, a lot going on here. Um, I've identified the input uh, variable t, and the output variable w. w is the U.S. minimum wage, and t is the number of years after 1960. So I've made a little table here, and then there are two ways that I can figure out my function. The first is with a calculator. I know I'm going to uh, fit an exponential model, so I can go put these uh, values into my calculator and have it find a function for me. And if I do so, I'll end up with this here. The output y is w, and the input is the variable t. Uh, one thing to note here is that t is 8 and then 16, because that's the number of years after 1960, so 1968 and 1976. If I'm doing this without a calculator, I'm looking at the multiplicative rate of change here. So I'd need to multiply 1.6 by 1.4375 to get 2.3. And this occurs over a change in 8 uh, in the number of years. So what I'm looking for is something I can multiply by itself 8 times that will be the same as multiplying by 1.4375 once. In other words, I'm taking the 8th root of 1.4375. So doing so, taking 1.4375 and raising it to the 1 8th power gets me 1.046, the same base that I had uh, from my calculator. So there's my base, and then I'm going to use one of the points to solve for A. I just chose this point here. I solve for A, and then this is my function if I do it by hand. Either way, I can answer the question, uh, what will the minimum wage be according to my model in 1996? So T will be 36, and with the calculator, I get approximately $5.6 an hour, and the, the model by hand, I also get approximately $5.6 dollars per, uh, per hour. So the model approximates a little bit over what the actual minimum wage happened to be, which was $5.15. All right, this is your favorite question here, explaining what log base E uh, of something actually means. Remember that this can be verbalized as the power that E must be raised to in order to equal 27. Now, E is approximately 3, uh, not quite, we know this, but the whole number that is closest to it is 3. E is a little bit less than 3. So log base 3 of 27 is the power that 3 must be raised to in order to equal 27, and that's 3. Now, since e is a little less than 3, we know that we're going to need to raise it to some power that's greater than 3 in order to get 27. So log base e, or natural log of 27, is going to be greater than 3. 
Sketching the graph really briefly here, e to the x is very easy. There it is. And we know that natural log of x is the inverse. So sketching that function is just a reflection over the line y equals x, which will look like this. And ln of x, natural log of x, is not going to intersect the y-axis. Think about evaluating natural log of 0, the power that e must be raised to to equal 0. That does not exist, and so there's no way for us to have a point uh, on the y-axis. Solving each of these equations, pretty self-explanatory. Um, I will uh, note that natural log here, you are more than welcome to write this as log base e, uh, so feel free to do so. And uh, down here, you'll notice right when I uh, isolate my exponential expression, 3.5 to the x power, doing so sh tells me that that would need to be a negative number. And there's no way to raise a positive value to an exponent and get a negative number. So at this point, I know I'm headed for a uh, no solution. And of course, when I solve for x, I get that x is log base 3.5 of negative 10, and that does not exist, so there is no solution to this equation. Okay, so taking a look here at this cup of coffee, Newton's Law of Cooling. This would not be a bad one uh, to sort of take a look at and um, analyze. You'll notice that the room temperature here is 75. My function is a decaying function that has been translated up 75 units. And uh, knowing what the maximum temperature is allows me to figure out the leading coefficient a. So if I were to know, for example, that my maximum temperature was 185 and the room temperature was 75, I would be able to pick my leading coefficient of 110 and use Newton's law of cooling. That would be something worth uh, noting. So I can sketch the graph uh, pretty quickly, um, as I have done here, and that will allow me to make sense of some of the questions that I am asked. Uh, explaining how the structure uh, shows me that the coffee is decreasing in temperature uh, is simply looking at the exponential expression. We have e to the negative 0 0.08t, and remember we can rewrite this as 1 over e to the 0.08t, and since this base is now less than 1, we know that we will be uh, dealing with a decaying exponential model. Uh, the temperature at the beginning of the experiment, quite simple, evaluating F at 0 is 185, so I have a temperature of 180 degrees, uh, 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And then uh, determining the number of minutes for the coffee to reach two different temperatures uh, has been done here, and I'm simply setting F of T equal to those values, uh, setting the temperature equal to 140 and 100, and solving as I have here. All right, last but not least, we're dealing with uranium-238. It is a radioactive isotope, and it decays exponentially. It takes forever, though. Uh, it has a half-life of 4.5 billion years. So interpreting this, that means that every 4.5 billion years, I'm going to multiply the amount I have by one-half. So I can visualize the uh, way that will look exponentially. It'll be a base of one-half, and my exponent will need to increase by one every time the value of t increases by 4.5 billion years. It looks something like that. So I'm going to define t to be years in billions. So t equals one would be one billion years. And then a of t will be the amount of uranium at some time t. The question wants me to find a value of t uh, that will take 100 grams of uranium and decay by 90%. What does it mean to decay by 90%? Well, that means you've only got 10% of it left, and 10% of 100 is 10. So I know, I know that a of t is going to be 10. I'm going to build my function here. My initial value is 100. My base is 1 half, and the exponent needs to be t divided by 4.5. Reason being is that I need t to go all the way to 4.5 before I can multiply by a full one-half. The half-life is 4.5 billion years. And so I need to have t over 4.5 to make that happen. And I can see there that only once t is 4.5 will I have a 1 in the exponent. And then it will take another 4.5 to get to 9 for me to have 2 in the exponent. In other words, to half one more time. 
So I'm going to set a of t equal to 10, in other words, the amount equal to 10, and I'm going to solve for t. The exact value would be 4 and a half times log base 0.5 of 0.1, and that is approximately 14.948. So putting that into words, you've got to be careful, this is billions of years, so I'm going to say it will take about 14.95 or about 15 billion years for 100 grams of uranium to decay by 90%.